Okay. Um, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Michael McAndrew. I'm the community manager for CiviCRM. I'm Josh Gowans. I'm the fundraiser for CiviCRM. And so um, this session is called CiviCRM at CiviCRM eating our own dog food. I don't know, I mean, we heard that expression scratch your own itch earlier today. I don't know if, how many of you have heard the expression eat your own dog food. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So this is, this is what I do when I'm not doing CBCRM stuff. This is me and my dog. And actually this, I, only, I just adopted this dog about a few weeks ago and he was, found, he was kind of found under a bush and he was very weak. And the, the, uh, the place where he adopted it from, they said, oh, you should, uh, you should give him some good quality food, you know, feed him good stuff. So I went to the supermarket and found, I looked at the dog food and it all looked, you know, it's all pink slime, really bad stuff. So I thought, this is, this is actually only two euros for six, you know, 600 grams of meat. So I thought, I'll go for this. So I used a bit of garlic, a bit of onion, I cut it up, put some quality extra virgin olive oil in, a bit of salt. And this is me eating it. There's not one of it going in my mouth, but I did eat it. And it tasted pretty good. And then here's my dog the next day. He's, he has to sit down before he eats. And here's the dog food here. And this is kind of stop motion. <laughs> you can see here it comes. And he's, we ate the same thing. So like the, 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 for those of you who are not familiar with this phrase, the, the idea, what it kind of tries to convey is um, when you're developing software uh, and you're developing it for someone, you should be prepared to use that software yourself and you should be happy, you should be happy to use it yourself since if we're writing it, but, you know, and we're trying to do similar things to all you guys, and we're not using the own software. We're not using the software ourselves. That kind of says something. So we like to eat our own dog food, and it's a it's a good thing. You get a good appreciation of the strengths and weaknesses, um, and when we, what the stuff we're doing here, we're not doing anything particularly mind blowing with TV Serum. We all the stuff we're using is out of the box features, and that's kind of to me that's kind of that's a nice, uh, it illustrates a nice point, right, that we're able to do all of this stuff just using pretty much standard out-of-the-box features. Yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in on that uh, since fundraising is my role. One of the things that, that I try to convey um, in presentations that I've given to nonprofits, for example, at Civi Day, was that even though Civi CRM technically is an LLC, we're very much like the nonprofits that use the system. Um, our objectives are very similar. Um, as a community, we have to use this system effectively to reach out and build capacity so that we can fund the core team so that development can continue on. So it's a message that you'll hear um, more and more that we're very much like you. And that's actually part of our strategy is to align ourselves, our fundraising strategy is to really align ourselves with nonprofits. There's nothing in the software, there's no setting that convinces nonprofits that that we're like you, we're in the same boat, and we operate the same way. Um, so we do that through our messaging and, and whatnot. So like Michael said, we pretty much use Civi CRM uh, straight out of the box. Okay, so the, the way we're gonna uh, structure this is we're gonna go through four different um, uh, things that we do with Civi CRM, show you how we use, show you, talk about why we do them, and then talk about how we do them. So we're gonna look at um, mailing, we're gonna look at Contributions. Uh, contributions. Um, then we're going to look at uh, events. events and membership. membership. Yep. So, okay, so the first one we're going to look at is our newsletter. I'm interested to know uh, who here is subscribed to the newsletter, or if anyone isn't subscribed. Okay, great. That's great. Um, okay, so there's a ton going on in our community, and before we had this newsletter, we often used to get the feedback, you know, how do I keep up with how do we keep up with everything? Wouldn't it be, it'd be great if you kind of just put a newsletter together. So um, th that's what we did. Um, we kind of focused it on all the things that are um, of interest to end users. We try and keep it 
although some developer does, stuff does creep in. We try and keep it as easy and easy to digest and as, as accessible as possible because we kind of think that developers and implementers, they kind of know where to go already, you know, and we want to make the, um, all the information as easy to understand as possible. The other thing we want to do with the newsletter is highlight people in our community and kind of just show, show off the people that are doing um, really impressive things and just have them as role models for other um, uh, people to, uh, to follow. The, another thing that we, that, that we want to do, and, that we, and we achieve this with the newsletter, is we want to have an accurate record of our community and where they are, where they're based. And we do that using this um, whole idea of checksums and web forms. And I'll, I'll go into that in, in de detail in a bit. So that's the, that's the why. Um, the how. Um, there's two organizations uh, that really help us with this newsletter. They're Back Office Thinking and Arity. And Marissa's here from Arity. Um, and I, I think, is anyone from Back Office Thinking here? Well, anyhow, they, to, to get Linda from Back Office Thinking um, does the, all of the collation of the stories. And then Marissa and Meg uh, at Arity do all of the, the design work. Um, we have, okay, so we have here this, um, we have a nice, we have a view here, I don't know if you've seen this. If you want to have a look at all of our um, old newsletters, we have them all um, archived on our, on our website, and, and you can click on any of these. I've got this one here, this is our, this is our latest newsletter. So I, wanna, so, I want to show you something here. Is any, who, who's familiar with checksums here? Okay. And smart and smarty token and tokens, I guess, in newsletters. Okay, so you're kind of familiar with it. I wonder if you have you seen this part at the end of our newsletter. It's kind of it's a long newsletter and it's down at the bottom. <laughs> have you seen this? Have you seen this part here? So this is a this is a kind of an ask to people. We're saying, hey, um, we're keeping you, we want to keep you informed of local meetups, conferences, and other things based on your location of Ubrique, Spain. And it says, if you've moved, please update your details. So that's, that's obviously pulling that in from um, my record here, since I'm based here in, in here, here's my address here. If I just edit my record and, and take out the city and the country and save that, oops. That's weird. Add <laughs> here. Okay, great. Okay, so now I now I saved that. Um, if you have a look at this, if I refresh this, it's updated and it's saying, "Hey, we're missing your contact information," and we have a few different ones set up here. So if we know the country but not the city you know, or, or if we know the city but not the country. We have four different messages that we display there and we are, and we say we have a different message, you know, saying we don't know where you are, we really want to keep you up to date with things. So what we're using we're using tokens there, but we're also using um, something called smart smarty. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Have you worked with that before? Okay, good. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. So it's kind of similar what we're doing is kind of similar to using tokens, but we've got two different types of tokens here. We've got smarty tokens and normal tokens. So I've color coded them. You do have to, you have to turn on this setting. Um, there is a, there's a blog post which I can share with you which um, shows you how to do this. But it's kind of, I've, gone, I've done a, a kind of a simple example here so you can see it. You can, first of all, you kind of, you capture the information you want. So we, we want, because the idea here is we want to send two different messages. If we know the country, we want, to, we want to say, tell them this is where we, you live. If we don't, we want to display the other message. So it's kind of simple. We just say, if country, as in if there is a country there, tell them they live in this country. Else, tell them they don't know where. We don't know where they live. And that's what we're using in that. Um, in that we're using a kind of a more complex version of that to, to um, do that. And that's, that kind of, that gives us a fairly, that gives us a good 
we've got a fairly good response rate on that. Every, every email we have kind of like between 20 and 50 people, I would say, um, clicking on that form. When they, obviously when they, so when they do click on that, of course they get to a, um, since they have a checksum, I mean, at, at the moment I'm logged in, so it would show this to me anyway, but if I was logged out, all of this stuff would still be, be pre-populated because we have a checksum. We're using a, a web form here, and when they fill in that web form, we record an activity in CIVI CRM uh, based on, to, t to say that they've updated their details. And in that way, we're kind of, as well as updating the details, we record that, and then obviously, on over time, we can build up you know, a, a picture of their engagement. We know they've updated their details at this time. We kind of add that to all the other things we know about them, what events they've gone to. We kind of build up a, we kind of start to do some engagement tracking. Run the contributions. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So contributions. Um, I sort of alluded earlier to the reason why we fundraise is to uh, fund the the core team and keep the development going. Um, that and Michael's salary, his exorbitant salary, uh, it really requires me to do a lot of work. Um, but but. In reality, every, everything that we're raising funds for is, is really central to operations, which I sort of broke that out into um, uh, salaries, infrastructure, and the ecosystem at large. Um, a lot of people don't know exactly where everything, how everything fits together in Civi CRM, but a lot of what we do uh, is involved in our manpower. So a lot of Civi CRM is manpower, and that translates into, into salaries. That translates into the work that we're doing on a daily basis, like bug fixes and new features. Two really simple, broad categories. But that's why, that's why we do what we do. Thank you. So this is the project budget that we used in uh, our 10-year anniversary presentation. I believe in, uh, I think Dave Greenberg presented it maybe in San Francisco at one point. And I threw this in here. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of, of what our budget is and what we're raising money for, where it goes. I also thought I'd throw in a little metric with Salesforce here because I like picking on them. Um, just to give you an idea of how effective Civi CRM is relative to other players in the market. Their budgets are far, far larger than ours, uh, and yet we're, I think we're the most popular open source CRM in the world. So. So contributions really span everything that we do from uh, our member program, our partner program, uh, and events, um, and of course general donations. So we, we're in the middle of a campaign right now with the latest release of 4.6. We're in sort of a, a download campaign, if you will. So we'll talk a little bit about general donations. So this is sort of my philosophy in um, getting donations from individuals. And basically, I highlighted one key word in here, and that's, that's purpose. A donor really has to value the purpose, the reason behind which they're donating more than the donation itself in order for them to, to execute that transaction. So our focus at Civi CRM isn't so much in maximizing all the widgets and all the features and everything. Our focus really is in identifying the purpose and zeroing, zeroing in on it as a team to, to secure those donations. Which is what I mean exactly right here. So the true power of Civi CRM, like Michael said early on, we use it out of the box. Our role as a fundraiser and as a community manager is to identify the who, what, when, where, why, and how they're donating. So for example, um, I mentioned the, the 4.6 campaign and we basically put together a campaign, um, uh, a messaging campaign, and we worked on the user flow. So previously, we had allowed people to come to the website and download Civi CRM, after which they would be routed to a donation form. And so we said, well, it's too easy just to download it and then go and do something else and just ignore that form. So we flipped that around. We didn't do anything internally on the, on the system itself to make that magic happen. We simply put the request in the, in the beginning, step A, so that users could read our appeal and choose to download or choose not to and go on, or choose to donate or choose not to and go on and just download the software. 
So that's an example of a process change that we did in that specific campaign. Um, the contributions, as you know, the, the contribution component in CiviCRM isn't, it's not isolated from everything else. So when we kicked off the uh, campaign, we went through a, a first appeal. We said, hey, 4.6 is out. Um, we really want you to support this latest release, and here's where you can donate. And we got a, you know, a pretty good response to that, more so from that single appeal than we had in uh, uh, previous uh, downloads and, and donations. Um, the other day we sent out a second appeal. I guess this was on um, Tuesday, maybe? Maybe we sent it out yesterday. Um, we sent out a second appeal that said, hey, we're, we're three weeks into this campaign. We're three weeks into the release of 4.6. So we went into Civi Mail and said, look, let's uh, send this campaign, let's send this email to everybody, um, but let's exclude end users that are member organizations. Uh, we do have a membership program. It's small, but growing. Uh, so we factored them out because they had already donated. We also factored out end users that had donated three weeks prior during the initial appeal. And I put, we factored out partners up there, but that's actually a lie, we, we didn't. I went ahead and included the partners so that the partners are aware that this is an appeal that we're sending out uh, so that they know what our fundraising is looking like and what our strategies have been. Nothing special in the system to pull this off. All, all pretty straightforward. I think so far to date we've come close to our goal of $5,000 for 4.6 uh, across 60, about 60 donations. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit about events now. So we are, we're, a kind of, we're a global community. We're spread around the world. And face-to-face uh, -face events are really important for us. Obviously, we can't, you know, as a core team, we can't be everywhere at once. Um, but we want to we encourage people to meet up, share their ideas, um, talk to each other. And we want to help uh, communities to grow in each of the different places around the world in which we use CiviCRM. And if those, if those events are happening, we want to obviously track uh, where they're happening, where, 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 we're, where we're doing best. Um, so I'm going to, um, okay. So I'm going to talk about um, meetups in particular. So the kind of, again, this, is, this isn't kind of like particularly um, incredible technology. It's kind of simple. We, to help people um, create meetups, we have a meetup toolkit. So and if any of you guys want to start a meetup, you don't know how to do it, you can go to this, um, this page and read our tips on how to, how to make a meetup. Um, as well as that uh, page, we also have a, um, um, we, we give people that want to run meetups access to Civi CRM. So obviously we don't want to, we don't want to give anyone that wants to run a meetup uh, access to our entire system. So we have a kind of a Civi CRM event administrator permission here. Um, and we just give them that permission. That allows them to create events. And it also allows them to send mailings to people. Um, we could get cleverer. We could get clever with this. We could use some more complex ACLs to restrict the, the people that they can see to people who live in the same country as them or live in the same state as them, for example. At the moment, we don't do that. That's on our list of things um, to do. Um, and I guess... Uh, when, when we're doing all of this, we have a we have to kind of strike a balance um, about kind of where we where we hold the data. Like we offer this we offer this toolkit and we offer people access to the CBCRM database for that purpose specifically of organising events. Since that's the kind of we want to support that and make it easy for them. But maybe they want to um, uh, do that in their own. They maybe have the, an event and they're running it themselves. So uh, CiviDesk run a lot of event, uh, training events, but they handle all the uh, registration for that themselves. So we still publicize those events, but we point them to the CiviDesk um, website for doing that. And similarly, you know, um, there's other, other platforms that people want, might want to use. A lot of people like to use Meetup for their events. And on the one hand, we're kind of thinking, oh, we want to collect all this data. We'd love for everyone to have all the information in CiviCRM. 
Um, so, you know, so we can see exactly where everyone's going, but we kind of want to balance that about with not being too restrictive on how people interact with the community. Not, we kind of like we want to make it as easy as possible. We don't want to set too many rules. You know. But that, with that kind of flexibility comes the kind of whole. You know, we get messier data. We don't have. A, we don't. We know. We don't. We're not able to track. Um, uh, our, you know, th those attendees as well as well as we might like to. But that's the trade-off that we have. All right, back to me. Uh, membership. Membership is. Um, we really have three programs um, that fall under membership. One is our partner program, which was started about two years ago, targeting developers and service providers that um, you know deploy Civi CRM for their clients. Uh, our member program uh, is for end users, and we just recently launched a technology partner program for uh, companies like IATS Payments, for example. Um, the purpose really behind membership across all organizations is to so kind of tie your own organization, in this case Civi CRM, with its members. In theory, it makes fundraising a little bit easier. You know, once you have a member, it's easier to get a renewal and, and so forth. That's the logic. Um, I think it also fosters a lot of community. And, and this being an a, a open source project community is absolutely critical to it. So it also provides a way to recognize um, member organizations more publicly than just sending them a thank you for your gift or thank you for your contribution. So it's, it's really critical. We see it in a lot of different open source projects. I think it's, it's probably a critical component across them all. Uh, like I said, members are key stakeholders in Civi CRM. Uh, we group them into partners, end users, and technology partners. Um, I guess I went, already went over this slide, huh? They all provide basically unrestricted income to the core team to, to further its development. So every organization is a little bit different. Um, I had a chat with uh, a guy earlier, and he um, is part of an organization that's a membership-driven organization. They have 10,000 members. Um, I think we have about 50 to 60 partners and 25 members and a handful of technology partners. So the scale is very different between his organization and ours, and that really affects how we approach it. Again, he's using the same setup basically that we are, the same exact functionality, but because of the volume that he's dealing with, he's more on the other end of the spectrum as far as automation, for example. In our own member programs, our partner and our membership program, um, we do a lot of direct communications. We have, uh, we have to convince a lot of people that, hey, this is really worthwhile. Um, I've done a fair amount of fundraising before, and, and somebody last night used the analogy that I bet it's like getting blood from a rock. Um, and he wasn't too far off. It's, it's very challenging. So in our own member uh, program, we basically build it similar to, to uh, what's common. Membership is on a rolling basis. Um, the, the main three differences, again, direct communications, and here are two that are um, maybe unique to Civi CRM right now. We allow flexible payments, and um, that can be where the data gets a little bit messy and challenging. Our partners, for example, are all across the world. Um, some partners, they, they'll pay right away, you know, They'll send a check in, it's great, it's done. Others want to split it across a monthly basis. Some want to pay via PayPal. Um, so there are all these different ways that they can become a partner, and that reduces our ability to automate that process. So that's a little bit of a challenge that you know, we'll address going forward. As we gain more partners and as we gain more members, um, we'll move more into CVCRM's native capabilities like automated uh, reminders, like more display and recognition of our partners. Um, similar to you know, perhaps how the newsletters are displayed right now, we could probably display our, our partners through the system uh, more efficiently or our, member, our members. Um, and then better segmentation. So for example, I said earlier that the contributions really kind of underlie everything. 
Um, so um, the 4.6 download campaign, for example, when people contribute to that, we're able to group them very effectively and communicate with them, um, you know, whatever, whatever we want. Um, so the same applies to the membership. As we get more and more members signed up, we might start sorting based on geography. We might start looking at sectors. And that's something that we could then turn around and, and leverage for future fundraising. We could, if we see a number of humane societies in our database, it might make it easier to reach out to a prospect and say, hey, we've, we've got X number of humane societies already on board with CIVI as a member. We really want you to join too. Cool. Okay. So just to, to finish off, and then we, we'll be really interested to hear questions from you guys. I mean, we've, but to finish off, we'll, I'll, just, I'll just talk about some things that we learned. Uh, too many CV CRM administrators spoil the broth. So like, when we, when we first installed CV CRM at CV CRM, we were kind of like, we, we gave, you know, like someone would say, okay, you know, Xavier would come along and say, oh, I really want to set up this profile to, um, to collect Im event information. So we'd give him CV CRM admin. And, you know, and, and he'd do that. And then someone else would come along and we'd give them that admin permission. And, I guess the thinking was, all of these people are experts at CIVI CRM. You know, the more experts we let in, the, the more fantastic our CIVI CRM will be. <laughs> and uh, it didn't really work. It didn't really work out like that in the end. Um, and that's definitely. What, I mean, that's kind of something that's kind of you know a classic a classic story. I guess we thought we'd be exempt from that, you know, um, but we weren't. And um, we, Josh and I, spent a fair amount of time, uh, kind of like trying to normalize all of that data, taking, um, you know, split, reducing the amount of profiles and the, you know, 10,000 groups that we have. Um, and taking Civi Serum admin away from people, which was kind of hard to do, you know, but they, they kind of, they know it's good for them, I think now. <laughs> and who, not many people like creating profiles, do they? They'd rather someone else did that for them. I guess, similarly, I don't know if you want to talk about keeping data clean? Yeah, yeah and, and this is, this is uh, kind of an ongoing uh, process that I'm sure every nonprofit deals with. As good as the system is, um, unless, uh, unless the data is good, you really can't get that much out of it. You know, the, I don't know if they have the saying in the UK, but garbage in, garbage out. And that's just a process that um, I, my personal opinion is for us, it's, it's more critical than the technology itself. I won't go to, to Coleman or Tim and say, hey, I really need this feature. I'm more likely to say, hey, I really need help scrubbing this data and getting it to a position or to a place where I can really leverage it more effectively and really put CVCRM to work. And I guess this last point, I guess we kind of knew this before we started anyway. You know, the more, the, more we, the more we track, the more information we have in there, the, the better our communications are, the more we understand about our um, contacts, the, the better we can communicate with them and, and relate to them. And I guess, you know, that is the kind of, that's the, the promise of a CRM. So, I mean, that's the, that's the end of the presentation in terms of um, what we want to talk, you know, share with you. Really, the idea was um, just to, to give you an idea about how we, how we operate as an organization. I mean, as you saw, a lot, not, not really any of the stuff we're doing is that, um, uh, incredibly innovative. It's just like out of the box stuff. But we it was more about just to give you ideas how of you know of how of how we work.